The Connecticut River, New England's longest running river at over 400 miles, hosts a number of species of anadromous fish. These are fish that spend the early portion of their lives in freshwater and their adult lives in saltwater only to return to freshwater to spawn. With migration season only a couple of weeks away, Connecting Point's Brian Sullivan traveled to several spots along the Connecticut River to check in on this annual rite of nature. Fish ladders and fishways. Where they exist, so do impoundments, and their purpose is right there in the name. The design allows for migrating fish to quite literally climb against the current and over the dam, which in the case of the one here at Mill Street in East Hampton, stands at six feet in height and leads to the upper reaches of the Manhan River. Although dozens of species of fish have been spotted passing through these concrete corridors since it opened in 2014, with fish migration season set to start in early May, spectators across New England are more likely to see river herring and shad making their way upstream to spawn. This section of the Manhan River is only about three miles removed from its confluence with the Connecticut River. And as anyone who's recently passed over the Vietnam Veterans Bridge in Holyoke can attest, New England's longest river has some mighty strong flow lately. Here at the Robert E. Barrett Fishway, they employ what's known as a fish elevator, or fish lift, to help migrating species up and over one of the oldest dams in the state. Up north, travelers driving across the Gil Turnus Falls Bridge have gotten an eyeful and earful here as well, as waterfalls touch down at a steady clip. Just behind me, the water is pouring into the Connecticut River quite heavily. How heavy? Well, about 70,000 cubic feet per second. But that's conditions-based and highly regulated by the hydroelectric company that controls the water. Normally during the summertime months, they're only required to let it flow at about 125 cubic feet per second. So it's quite a stark contrast. To my left here is another regulated body of water known as the Power Canal. And that stays at a steady height and depth year round. and flows about two miles downstream to a research facility that studies, among other things, fish migration in the Connecticut River. The name might be the United States Geological Survey, but biology is the order of the day here at the Turner's Falls campus. Here in the wet lab, they study what are known as anadromous aquatic life. Anadromous are, are all of the species that include sturgeon, river herring, shad, salmon, striped bass, that migrate to fresh water and, and spawn there spend a, a generally variable period in fresh water, but then have to move to the ocean for the major growth phase of their life history, but then come back again to fresh water for spawning. The short-nosed sturgeon is more of a landlocked species, which utilizes the river year-round without having to move to the ocean for their life history. McCormick's species of specialty is the Atlantic sturgeon, which can spend anywhere from 20 to 40 years in the ocean before returning to spawn and that somewhat prehistoric look about them, that's no accident. Sturgeon, or species like theirs, have been around for 275 million years, making them one of the oldest vertebrate aquatic creatures that are still alive. But their existence has been a struggle in recent years, and that's one reason they're being studied here at the USGS. We want to protect the existing populations and hopefully in the long term expand populations like the Atlantic sturgeon that have been overfished and suffered from habitat loss and impacts of dams. So we want to provide cleaner rivers, we want to provide better fish passage, remove dams that are not adding to the social good um, and get rid of those so they're not an impact to fish moving up and downstream. Meanwhile, on the other side of the lab is a species that Hollywood has enjoyed turning into the thing of nightmares, although at this point in their lives they don't seem so terrifying. This is the sea lamprey, an eel-like creature that spends four to eight years in its larval stage burrowed in freshwater substrate feeding on planktonic drift. They don't become parasitic until they head out to sea as they mature into adults, and they don't even remotely resemble the man-eating monsters of horror movie lore. In fact, some people eat them. For me, it had a personal side to it because I'm from Portugal, and their uh, lampreys are considered a delicacy. Um, so I always, I'm, I was always used to see them in restaurants, in aquariums being sold, and I was always intrigued by the aspect of the sea lamprey, the threatening looks, although they are not threatening whatsoever. In freshwater, the lamprey is a source of food for a number of birds, fish, and other mammals, while bringing vital nutrients to the ecosystem. For scientists, their biological functions are an invaluable source of study material. 
They have diverged from the Telios fishes, those regular fishes that general people think about for more than 550 million years. So there's, there's, they, they have been longer here uh, than, for instance, dinosaurs, and that, that by itself is fascinating, studying a species that has been coexisting with so many evolutionary periods in our history, and they're still around and they're still thriving well. Fishways like those found in East Hampton, Holyoke, and just up the road from the lab here in Turner's Falls are a means for them to continue to thrive. The people responsible for making better fishways, well, they can be found at the center's fish passage flume facility, where during fish migration, they take in water from the power canal and run it through any one of these three flumes here on the bottom floor to test different passageways. And there's really no facility like this in the world that can, can do that. There's, there are other hydraulic labs, but they're usually quite small. And our ability to move large volumes of water through these structures basically simulates what a fish would be experiencing when it went through uh, one of these structures. And to simulate that simulation, they've got a lab for that here too, because this place is, after all, a research facility, not a fish hatchery. This is where safer and more effective ways of fish passage are designed, and species of fish that may not be as well known, but are just as important to the ecosystem, are studied. Our purpose is to really kind of educate people uh, as to uh, what's out there, what do they need in order to survive and, and to thrive in, in river systems that we're trying to, to restore. That restoration could include the Connecticut River. The water may be flowing in abundance now, but this is by no stretch the norm. However, the hydroelectric plant here in Turners Falls is going through a relicensing process, and one of the changes that could be implemented is better water flow into the river, not just the power canal. And that's something that would benefit more than just the creatures living underwater. Putting more water in the river will also be good for recreation. People go down here and they fish. Uh, they want to use it for paddling. And we're hoping that with water actually in the river, people can use that for, for both of those activities.